Last winter, Eric Laithwaite built a model of a new invention out of his boyhood Meccano set. The invention had taken him 20 years to develop. When he first proposed it, he was at the height of his career and perhaps the most celebrated engineer in Britain. But the scientific establishment ostracized him because they thought the idea defied the laws of physics. Until tonight, it's been seen only by a small band of sympathizers. I've been involved in making some pretty unusual machines in my time, but even on those standards, this is a very unusual device indeed. It's a new form of propulsion that the establishment said couldn't possibly work. This is a model of something which we have now established as a possible drive even for space vehicles but nevertheless as far as the establishment is concerned this is heresy the heart of this new machine is a gyroscope and gyroscopes have always fascinated me of course, they're to do essentially with things that spin. And I think things that spin are magic, whether it be spinning electrons, spinning planets, or spinning galaxies. Sometimes I think spin is all there is. I think matter itself is nothing but spin. Certainly, with this gyroscope, I hope to develop an entirely new propulsion system. That a toy might become a new form of propulsion has sounded to most of Laithwaite's colleagues like the fantasy of a child, not an engineer. When you first see a gyroscope, it looks magical. And for some reason, he seems to have taken this childlike impression of the gyroscope. He thought it was something strange and mysterious. And if you are an innovator, as he is, the strange and mysterious have a great attraction. And he followed that, and he followed it too far. There you go. But for some engineers, he's a hero. Eric Laithwaite is one of the giants of electrical machine developments in the 20th century. He's a man with intense curiosity about all technical matters, uh, a burning desire to find out how things work, how things operate. He also has a desire to communicate his ideas and share his enthusiasm you get the impression that it's trying to get a grip on this magnetic flux. Laithwaite seems always to have had an enthusiasm for the strange and magical. Now it's going nicely. The linear electric motor is a very simple idea. It's just an ordinary electric motor which has been unrolled. And will produce a force... He's best known as the developer of the linear motor. We put the aluminium plate on the surface and switch on. And the effect of the force is now quite obvious. In the 60s, as a young professor at Imperial College, Laithwaite developed scores of applications for the linear motor. In the 70s, one was used to power a British experimental high-speed train. Laithwaite helped develop a full-scale test vehicle combining the latest hovercraft and linear motor technology. But one day, he suddenly got bad news. 
the tract hovercraft company is at present in, in jeopardy uh, and it stands a, a chance of stopping just for lack of funds. And stop it did when the British government pulled out. But Laithwaite wasn't beaten. Switch on! He immediately proposed an even better idea for a high-speed train. Now you see that supported height is now about six inches and six inches is more than the height you would need to suspend the high-speed train. He made a linear motor levitate by electromagnetism. We've designed the motor to propel it, which gives you the lift and guidance for nothing, literally for nothing, for no additional equipment and for no additional power input. This is beyond my wildest dreams that I should ever see that sort of thing occur. Maglev has shown up well under test at the Railway Technical Centre. But in Britain, Laithwaite's visionary idea was only half-heartedly developed and then dropped. With all this going only to be taken up by the Japanese and Germans. It was the final disappointment. The cancellation was a terrible blow to him. He saw a major project work he had been engaged in for years, which had been building up gradually but steadily, making progress and seeming to be leading to something quite outstanding. He saw this all vanish disappear almost overnight when the project was cancelled and it was a terrible blow for him. Electromagnetism is for me the nearest thing we have to sheer magic. Two different directions of motion with one and the same set of soils. But ironically for the public, Laithwaite was rapidly becoming an engineering superstar. He tried hard to be as enthusiastic about linear motors as before, but he now knew it was a technology that in Britain had been unfulfilled. I've got a rubber model. He'd reached a dead end. But his life was about to be changed forever. fateful day, this man phoned Laithwaite to say he had a remarkable new invention. Laithwaite invited him to Imperial College. An amateur inventor, Alex Jones, had brought Laithwaite a crude device which he said broke the laws of physics. Other scientists of Laithwaite's eminence might well have dismissed him as a crank, but Laithwaite was curious. Jones's device consisted of a weight hinged to an upright stand mounted on wheels. Just swinging the weight from side to side, said Jones, would propel the device a few feet forward, with no drive to the wheels, no external thrust. Laithwaite knew that was impossible, but Jones told him it wasn't if the weight was a spinning gyroscope. Laithwaite vividly recalls his reaction. When Alex switched his machine on, it was quite disturbing to one's upbringing. The gyroscope appeared to be producing a force without a reaction. When you see something like that, you say, well, that shouldn't happen. And, and once you see them like that, then you hope, don't you, you've got to find out. <laughs> I thought I'd seen something that was impossible. Like everyone else, I'm brought up on Newton's laws of motion. The third law is supposed to have said for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, you cannot propel a body outside its own dimensions. This thing apparently did. So Laithwaite immediately set about investigating more impossible things a gyroscope might do. I started to do experiments of my own. One of them was to make rather large spinning tops with most of their mass in the rim of the wheel. And these very definitely did something that looked impossible. And by 1973, uh, Sir George Porter asked me if I'd do a discourse at the Royal Institution. The Royal Institution is one of Britain's most august centres of scientific learning. has a long tradition of inviting some of the nation's leading scientists to give a discourse about their work. The great scientist Faraday himself had been a frequent lecturer, 
but such was Laithwaite's standing that he too had been asked more than once to follow in his footsteps and address the cream of Britain's scientific establishment. Laithwaite decided to discuss his new research on gyroscopes. I was very excited about it because I knew I had something to show them that was startling. And I did it rather in the spirit of, come and look what I've discovered, come and share this with me. It was only afterwards I realised that nobody wanted to share it with me. His mistake was to appear to challenge the very foundations of science, even Newton himself. A gyroscope is a curious device in which conventional physics seems to go out of the window. Now, first of all, we spin up the wheel, and it's then what I call live, as opposed to when it's not spinning, dead. So what I'm going to do is to hang this large weight on, and then as it's rotating, hang on the weight, it recesses, it has angular momentum about the vertical, we catch the weight next time round, hop, and the angular momentum just simply disappears, it seems to evaporate. It makes you question the validity of the Newton's third law. Action and reaction are equal and opposite, and this is another experiment that appears to defy conventional physics. And you see, this is not doing what the physics book says it should, because the mass centre is certainly not the centre of rotation. And that's not what is supposed to happen. He only learnt afterwards how his audience were taking it all. There were several things in the lecture that were pure heresy. It won't go away. That is a ridiculous thing to see. To say that an object can rotate in a circle and not produce the full amount of centrifugal force, the man's obviously a lunatic. And the second thing was lifting the big wheel. How do you manage to lift a 50 pound wheel with one hand? There is no way I can pick that up with one hand, not, not above there. I'm not a strong man, I don't need to weight training. But when it's spinning, it's another matter. Release it, and it begins to climb almost on its own. No strain on my arm at all. There must be some trick, was what people said. Whereas, in fact, I knew that once you got this thing processing, it appeared to float. It did appear to lose weight. And it was this idea that a gyroscope might lose weight that Lathwaite developed in his last experiment, one which was far too heretical for his audience and proved his final undoing. So if the big wheel lost weight, the question is, will these little wheels lose weight when they're turned round and made to precess upwards, just like the big wheel? Let's try. Now each time the wheel comes down the wall, you see the needle kick back, it appears to give a lot of weight as with the big wheel. Lathwaite genuinely thought he was opening up a brand new area of research and that as Britain's most famous engineer, he would be taken seriously. You could use this lot of weight. This is certainly the most exciting experiment. I was simply trying to tell them that, look, here's something very unusual that's worth investigating. I hope I've got sufficient reputation in electrical engineering not to be written off as a crank. So when I tell you this, I hope you'll listen. But they didn't want to. I don't think we've hardly begun. After the RI lecture, all hell let loose, and, and primarily as a result, first of all, of an article in the New Scientist, which